Hey, it's Michael Griswold. Uh, hey, in this video, we're going to talk about why people break up. Now, if you've seen any of my other videos or watched uh, any of the philosophy that I have behind relationships, you'll know that the number one reason that people break up, number one re reason that re relationships fail, is because of communication. But in this video, we're going to talk about why that is. And I'm going to tell you the three reasons, the three underlying reasons, the three reasons that people don't ever discuss as to why they communicate poorly. You see, in a lot of relationships, we're able to communicate very well, right? Relationships with our friends, relationships maybe with our, with our family. But sometimes in relationships that are intimate or threatening, we feel, our communication kind of shrivels up and we're not able to articulate as well as we'd like. Why is that? Well, there's three reasons. One is fear. Two is ignorance. And three is insecurity. I'm going to discuss them briefly and then give you a tip on how to avoid this in your relationship. One, fear. Look, people, you hear this all the time. It's the most overused term you've ever heard in relationships. I just don't want to get hurt. Well, listen, here's some news for you. If you're alive, you're going to get hurt. And if you don't want to get hurt, then you should take your heart, wrap it up into a nice little cloth, put it into a coffin, and seal it so that nothing can touch it. Because if you love anything, whether it's an animal or a hobby or anyone, you run the risk of getting hurt. And that hurt is an indication of the value of what you love. So do yourself a favor. Don't say anything like that anymore. It's dumb. You don't want to get hurt. Two is ignorance. People don't educate themselves on how to communicate. Now because you're watching this video and probably watching other videos that I've done, you probably don't have this as much as a lot of people. But there is still that, that ignorance that we all generally have on the need for communication and how to do it well. So to combat this, obviously you learn. You, you learn how to communicate. Because we don't know that innately, do we? We don't come out of the womb knowing, okay, this is how to communicate difficult things. This is how to communicate about sex. This is how to communicate about jealousy. This is how to communicate about whatever. You have to learn it. So invest in it because your relationships are the most valuable thing that you're going to have. So what's the third thing? It's insecurity, right? And it's this fear of being exposed. You know, I uh, met this girl the other day and we were just chatting and you know we we're kindred spirits and one of the things that she said that was very complimentary was she said thank you for seeing me because I saw through the facade and I saw her now, a lot of times and this is a credit to her a lot of times we're afraid of people seeing us because we want them to see the facade don't we but see that is an illusion because the facade is never as valuable it's never as interesting and it's never as lovable as the real you. See, the real you has all sorts of shades of gray and nuances and beauty. And that is what we ultimately want people to see. But it scares us. So rather than allowing that insecurity to impose upon you and showing someone a facade, you learn how to be vulnerable. And vulnerability is the greatest display of strength. Vulnerability, as, as I define it, is the opposite of insecurity. Vulnerability says, here I am, and you may be able to hurt me, but that's okay. It will not destroy me. I'm strong enough to take whatever hardship, whatever difficulty might come my way. And to solidify this point, think about this. Think about somebody that you know who might be a little quirky, who might be a little socially inept, or might be just kind of a weirdo in some social way. But they're 100% them. I had a friend when I was in the Navy who was the most socially awkward person I ever met. His name was Brent. Love you, Brent. You're awesome. And when I first met him, I thought he was the biggest weirdo because he would have these long pauses. I would ask him, I'd be like, hey, man, what's up? And he'd be like, and he would literally pause for five seconds before he talked. And at first, it was very weird to me. And then, as I got to know him, I realized that's him. And he's 100% him, and he became one of my dearest friends. Not because he's weird, but because he's authentic. 
And that is powerful. So, fear, ignorance, insecurity. Those are the three underlying motivations for poor communication. They don't have to be that for you. I'll see you next time.